So now it's Charles Haley's turn. And in terms of winning Super Bowls, nobody did more than Charles Haley. Five Super Bowls, two with the Niners, three with the Cowboys, four and a half Super Bowl sacks. That is a record. It is now time for Charles Haley's long wait to come to an end. I love it. Chris Berman, take it away. Well, that was great. That was great. There is a, a term among coaches, especially on the offensive side of the football, beware of him, he can wreck a game. Charles Haley could wreck a game. A fourth round pick by San Francisco in 1986 out of James Madison. He soon became presidential at linebacker. Four 10 sack seasons in six years, including 16 in 1990 and two Super Bowls. Traded to Dallas in 1992. Moved to defensive end. The sacks kept coming. 100 and a half for his career. And the Super Bowls kept coming. Three more with the Cowboys. Five Super Bowl rings all told. So he is the only man in NFL history to have a ring for the thumb, the index finger, the middle finger, the ring finger, and the pinky. His team's combined regular season record 146 and 60. Charles was in charge to present him the longtime owner of the San Francisco 49ers, Eddie DeBartolo Jr. Charles Haley gets the sack. Charles Haley has his first sack today. He was strong, lanky. He had tremendously long arms, almost impossible to block. That is a sack, Charles Haley. Just a force to be reckoned with. Charles Haley was a hurricane, causing destruction behind the line of scrimmage. But he may not have formed if it weren't for the late Bill Walsh, who was willing to take a chance on an undersized linebacker from a little-known Virginia college. Very seldom did you run into a, a situation like uh, we did with Charles Haley and James Madison. Usually, even great players from those small schools fell through the cracks. Selected by the 49ers in the fourth round of the 1986 draft, Haley made an immediate impact. And another sack back in the four-yard line. And it's Charles Haley, a rookie out of little James Madison, who has already made a big mark in San Francisco. Suddenly, the team with a prolific offense had a menacing pass rush as well. With help from Haley, the 49ers won back-to-back -back Super Bowls. He was the devastating presence on the field. Offensive coordinators had to know where this man was every single play. Pressure by Haley, and the ball slips out of his hands. It's picked up by Haley. He goes into the end zone. Touchdown, 49ers! He absolutely was our X factor. Haley became not only a fan favorite, but the owners as well. I just felt very close to him, and I and I think that Charles in turn felt very close to me. On a Monday night, Charles was ejected from the game, and uh, he was sent to the locker room. Unsportsmanlike conduct, 94 is disqualified. Oh, he is ejected. I went down to the locker room because I wanted to be with him, and I put my head around the corner and I said, Charles, Charles. And I went around the corner and he lifted his head. He said, oh my God, Mr. D said they ejected you too? We're from the new school. We use technique and get the job done to the max. There was an all talk team in the NFL. Here's my MVP. <laughs> Despite his close relationship with DeBartolo, in 1992, Haley was traded to the Dallas Cowboys. It was a move that would have major ramifications for both franchises. In my opinion, that was probably the biggest mistake I ever, uh, I ever made as an owner. No question about it. He changed the landscape of competition. With Haley, the Cowboys won three of the next four Super Bowls. Kelly's gonna throw. Here's Haley. Hit him and picks off in the air. Jimmy Jones intercepts and rolls in for a touchdown. A beautiful, a beautiful touchdown. Haley 
finished his career with over 100 sacks and is still the only player to be part of five Super Bowl victories. I think that he was an integral part of the success of two dynasties. He goes down in, in history as one of the great speed pass rushers of all time. I am honored to present Charles Haley for enshrinement into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting Charles Haley for enshrinement into the Pro Football Hall of Fame, Ed DeBartolo Jr. I'd like to thank God for making this moment, making this special, making this a special moment for me. Um, I'd like to also thank the class of 2015. You know, um, Mr. D, we were um, we were talking in the back, and I I had this written down to tell that story that he just told. <laughs> so now I got to change it, you know. But I'd I like to thank Mr. D for these kind words, for stepping up to be the greatest owner that I ever played for. He was passionate. He was very passionate about his team. He, he'd done so many great things for me. And I want, you to, I want to tell you one of the greatest things he did for me. He took me down to Pebble Beach, guys, to play golf. You know I don't know how to play golf, right? So I'm driving a golf cart around and I drive the golf cart up on the green, okay? Eddie, Ronnie, Joe, all them guys, they laughing at me, okay? Some guy flying behind us going like, get off the green. I'm going like, what is he talking about? So I go to the next hole. I drive up on the green. And so then, you know, I said, man, if this guy comes to open his mouth again, I'm going to knock him out. <laughs> and so I start to turn around then, Eddie and them go, Hey, you, um, you can't drive up on the green. I said, all this shit is green. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, <laughs> well, you know, um, and also, you know, the thing about, when you're thinking about Hall of Famers, you think about winning. Mr. D, he won five Super Bowls. He, he, he presented five players. I've won five. You know, if, if the standard is winning, why is he not here? You know? I pray that Mr. D becomes in the Hall of Fame sooner than later, guys. I like to thank my my ex-wife, my four beautiful kids, Madison, CJ, Brianna, and Princess. Um, Karen, in, um, in 1988, she diagnosed me with manic depressive. And I thought she was just a group of guys that wanted to always put me in this box. So we had problems after that. And I never, I never really listened, nor did I step up to the plate and do something about it. My life spiraled out of control for years, for years. But today, guys, I get to go back into the locker room to my teammates and tell them, guys, the mistakes that I made. And that the only way that you can grow is that you got to ask for help. I walked in the league. Uh, 
Um, I walked in the league, a 22-year-old 20, man with a 16-year-old inside of me screaming for help. And I would not ask for it. I would not ask for that help. But today, guys, I take my medicine every day. And I try to inspire others to do the same. And that's because I finally listen. And thank you. I, I, my mom, my mom, Virginia Haley, she's here. Mom, would you stand up? I, she, guys, she's smiling over there, but she's mean, I'm telling you. I, I, I tell guys all the time, I said, the reason why I got quick feet, because she put that switch back on my leg, you know? My mom, uh, she's my best friend, guys. Um, she knows everything. She knows everything. She prayed me into heaven, guys. She taught me how to get on my knees, how, how to pray. And um, guys, I love her to death. Um, my dad, my dad is, um, my dad had both his legs amputated, guys, and um, he couldn't make it here today. But he's always setting examples for me and my family because, you know, he doesn't let that hold him back. He's a true champion, a true warrior. And I'd like to thank my, my four brothers, George, Lawrence, David, and James. Um, the reason why I'm thanking these guys because they beat me up all the time. They would not pick me to play on any of the games. So, you know, they would always call me clumsy and Bigfoot. And, um, and guys, I used to go to church praying that they get hurt, fall out. So it never happened, so I changed my prayer. I said, God, give me something to be great at. And it was football. And then, the, you know what? The rabbit got the gun then. Uh, my second great owner, Jerry Jones, I know he had hip replacement. I don't know if he's here or not, but I, I seen his beautiful daughter, Charlotte, over there. Um, I, you know what, guys? Jerry's done so many great things. My daughter, Brianna, she had leukemia, and Jerry opened up Cowboy Stadium to do the, the biggest bone marrow drive in the history to try to help me save my daughter's life. <laughs> Jerry. When I got traded to the Cowboys, the first handshake I saw, the first handshake I received with Jerry Jones, you know, I got off the plane, was eight cameras looking, I couldn't see nothing. And as a hand stick off, hi, right, I'm Jerry Jones out of Dallas, owner of the Dallas Cowboys. Welcome to Dallas. <laughs> hey. I, I, and guys, it was a five minute ride to the hotel. It took an hour and a half. I know everything he ever done in his whole life. <laughs> and you know, part of the Cowboys, the equipment guys, I love you. Um, you know, and now guys, my teammates. Uh, well, I got a lot of teammates. Carol Roberts, thank you so much. And you're a special friend with a heart of gold. My best friend Andrew. Hey, you pulled me out of you pulled me out of depression a long a lot of times, man. I love you, man. And and your sweet daughter um, Mia. My my head coach in college, Chalice McMillan, his wife, Stan. Stand up, coach. Guys, he should have sent me home the day I walked in. I was hell on wheels. I'd like to also thank the Windorfs, um, the Windorfs brothers, your greatest friends, the Naharos. And um, guys, I had the greatest coach ever, Bill Walsh. Um, he was, um, he's a Hall of Famer, but guys, he was more to me. I, he followed me my whole career. You know, I used to go to Stanford while he was, um, he was the head coach. He was stop and come over and listen to me whine. And, um, and guys, 
at that moment where I didn't know whether to stay or go, um, he would not help me out make that decision. And um, I'm still mad at him about that, but uh, I'm going to get over that. But, you know, two days before he died, he called me, still asking me, what can I do to help you? And, you know, I will always love him with all my heart, guys. He was really special to me. And George Seifert, a great coach. Jimmy Johnson, a warrior, Zulu. And then the, the best player coach ever, J um, <laughs> Barry Switzer. My God, guys, he's a hoot. I, I really love them, man. And my position coaches, Bill McPherson and um, Coach Hart. Coach Hart took me out on the field, guys, the first day I got in camp. And he kept me always, guys. He taught me how to be a pass rusher. He slapped me upside the head, too, a couple of times, guys. So, uh, but Coach Hart is right here, guys. Because of him, I'm here today, guys. Because of Tommy Hart, I'm here today. I'd like to um, thank some of my teammates. Tony Tobert, right, Tobert? Leon Lett, Darren Wilson, Russell Maryland, um, Michael, Troy, and Emmett, Ronnie, Joe, and Jerry, E. Wright, KT, and Guy Michael Tower. Guys, I am truly blessed, guys. I've played with some of the greatest players ever in the history of football, and I've learned a lot. And the one thing that I learned from all these guys is unselfish play. Team matters. We need to go back to that. It's not about individuals, it's about team. That's the only way we can have success. Well, in closing, guys, I like to say one thing is, um, you know, I used to read two books in the Bibles all the time, guys. It was Psalms. And um, because King David, you know, you know, when he said, I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I shall feel no evil. I always thought everybody was against me. So that was, and he was the first warrior in the, in the Bible too. So, you know, I used that. And then Job, conviction. Hey, he was a rock. He would not be moved. And that's the way I feel about football, guys. When I step out on that field, guys, I, I was determined to be the best every play. Not some plays, but every play. Guys, thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, Charles Haley. The greatest. All this stuff the, is green. The greatest golf story in the history of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Ever. Mick Tinglehoff next.